Good evening. Welcome to the mayoral and city council inauguration today, December 6th, 2023. I am Ricardo Morgan. On behalf of the city of Fayetteville, we are very pleased to have all of you here with us tonight. At this time, the police and fire department's honor guard team will post the colors. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, national anthem, and invocation. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, Miss Music Blyther will sing our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the Excellent job. Thank you, music. And now the invocation will be offered by Pastor E.B. Herman of Harvest Family Church. Thank you. Heavenly Father, first and foremost, we thank you for bringing us, each and every one of us here safely tonight. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We lift up this administrative team here that you put together. We ask for your grace and your wisdom to rest mightily upon them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Herman. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, we will now begin the administration of the oaths of office. After the conclusion of each oath signing, I would like to offer the privilege for each elected official to speak for a few moments. Mayor Colvin, please step forward to receive your oath of office administered by Ms. Sandra Morrissey.
H. Coleman, great leadership promotes great fellowship. Continue to honor God in all that you do. For the same God who placed the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky will surely lead, guide, and take care of you. Thank you for your services. Please repeat after me. I, Mitchell Colvin, I, Mitchell Colvin, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, that I will support, and maintain, and maintain, the Constitution, the Constitution, and laws, and laws, of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution, and the Constitution, of laws, and laws, of North Carolina, of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that, and that, I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of my office, of my office as mayor, as mayor for the city of, for the city of Fayetteville, Fayetteville, North Carolina. North Carolina. So help, so help me God. Me God. Thank you. <laughs> Well, good evening. First, let me say thank you to Ms. Morrison. Thank you so much to Almighty God for allowing another privilege and another opportunity to serve the people of this great city. And thank you to my fellow citizens of Fayetteville, North Carolina, for your confidence and the trust and faith that you've placed in me and allowed me to serve you for the last six years and entering a new historic fourth term. First, also let me say Thank you to my amazing and beautiful wife, Dr. Colvin, to my stunning daughters, Portia and Maya and Ashley in her absence, to Jackson, uh, my extended son in love, as well as to my mother, and uh, Elva Colvin. Thank you for the sacrifices and for the prayers and for the encouragement and for all the investments you invested in me and my brother and along the way. And thank you to my brother, my, sometimes my agitator, my encourager. Uh, but again, I, I definitely appreciate uh, all of your love and support and you've always been there. And I'll continue to be there for you and work tirelessly on your goals and your, as you move into your destiny uh, for the next level, hopefully in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. But to my father in his absence, you know, in the first term I remember standing here and reverencing him in his absence for his contribution to my life, to the contribution to our family for the tireless sacrifices of hard work to make sure that we were provided for, to provide opportunities for legacy and to take care of our families for generations. I say thank you, Father, who is now resting in the arms of the ultimate Father. I thank you, and in your memory, I am greatly and forever grateful. To my brother, Ronnie, who also was one that has transitioned on since we've started this journey. Uh, to my gra grandmother, Augusta Robinson, uh, I love you all so much for your contributions. And also to my sisters who are in their absence, uh, to Sheila and to Bonnie, say thank you. Extended families too, uh, Dr. Backman and Daryl for your amazing support and to all so many others. Amazing staff at my office for allowing me the opportunity to serve this great city, so I say thank you. And I would be remiss if we did not acknowledge and thank uh, all of the elected officials, both past and present, if they could please stand at this time if we could give them a round of applause. Any elected officials that are here? <laughs> 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 
Indeed, this is a thankless work that we do. And certainly, the contributions that you've made on previous councils and on the various levels of government, uh, we indeed drink from waters of wells we did not dig. And tonight I stand as 32 other men and women who've raised their hand to serve as the mayor of this city, ready, willing, and committed to service. Over the last six years, we've accomplished so much together, and I'm encouraged to know that greater is ahead. Together, we have walked the rugged road, sometimes endeavorable path to prosperity and to progress in this community, but we've continued to move forward. To my colleagues that are coming to step into this realm of service, my prayer is that for us to all collectively work twice as much on things that make a difference rather than our differences. Let us remember to put the community before any individual ambitions. Tonight, as I'm reminded of this journey, I want to highlight a few things that we've accomplished together. First term, we stood here and we promised to chart a path for more collaboration and better working relations with our other elected officials. So tonight, I, if there are any county commissioners or city council members, I see uh, Mayor Anthony and others from the other municipalities and all elected officials to, to know that we are one community. We are one Cumberland County. But we have made tremendous progress, but yet there's more work to do. The second term, I asked council if they would pri prioritize and accentuate the fact that diversity is a strength in this community and not a weakness. That we are a huge melting pot of different races and backgrounds and ethnicities and opinions. That makes us stronger, not weaker. And as we continue to move this city forward, it was because that we've embraced inclusion and we made diversity a strength and not a weakness. The third term, just a year ago, we stood here and promised to work diligently to push forward more resources and to prioritize mental health and homelessness throughout this city. And I'm proud to say that the previous council and this council have continued to make that priority a reality by the, the opening of a new day resource center and continuing to move to provide resources for those who are unsheltered or less fortunate. Freshman council, council member Mario Benevente, I have to take my hats off to him for the service and the diligence that he put in a specific newly created committee in an area that we had no knowledge or, or, or no history of moving in. And so we have worked not only with him and the other members of that committee to push mental health and homelessness to the next level. And this term, I would like to stand and commit together that we all are charged, that we have the duty to invest and to save and to create a path of safety and prosperity for our next generation. Youth gun violence in this country is unacceptable. And any of us and all of us have a role to play in that. And so I hope as we move this next term that we make gun violence and youth gun violence and proactively investing in our youth and our young people in a way that mitigates and charts a path of positive and quality of life forward. Not a community of... You know, a very wise man that contributed so much to this, to this world, Mahatma Gandhi said, and he reminded us that a city is measured on how it treats its most vulnerable. That includes our youth, our seniors, our elderly, and our unsheltered, and those that are least fortunate. So let us be looked at favorably in generations to come as they look back to see what did we do, what did I do to address this community issue. I believe that now is the time for more investment in our young people and our next generation, preparing them for life, of offering alternatives and options for those who are at risk or in high-risk areas, we believe in investing in our future, and I look forward to keeping this front and center. And finally, as we prepare to talk about the future, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about how it is that we put ourselves in position for success for the years to come. Recently, we learned that North Carolina was awarded $1 billion by the U.S. Department of Transportation just the day before yesterday to increase connectivity between North Carolina and the D.C. metro area. Later this week, Tomorrow or at the end of the week, it would also be announced that Fayetteville has been awarded a grant that connects us to Raleigh out of that same billion dollar infrastructure. <laughs> this will allow the young, most talented, vibrant people in our community 
to remain here while continuing to work and explore opportunities of advanced technology, of advanced medicine in the triangle. We are not competitors, we complement one another. And this connectivity will make it easier and more of a reality for someone to leave in the morning and return home for dinner to their families and continue to invest and live in this community. So tonight, as I conclude my remarks to all of my council members that have come, I look forward to working with you. I promise that we will bring and I will bring a commitment every day to make this city a better place with you. And I look forward to working with you. Our future is bright. Our time is now. Let's make it happen together. May God bless you and God bless our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Colvin. Congratulations. I now invite Catherine Keith Jensen of District 1 to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Claire Hill. here with you and honored to administer the oath to you again. Right hand, left hand. Okay. Left hand. Yeah, you're right. Raise your hand. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I state your name. I, Catherine Keith Jensen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of North Carolina. Of North Carolina. Not inconsistent with. Not inconsistent with. Or inconsistent therewith, I apologize. Ins inconsistent and therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As council member. As council member. For the city of Fayetteville, North for, Carolina. For the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. Before I start with my speech, I would like to acknowledge Chancellor Allison and thank you for having us here tonight. So if you could stand up so everyone could see you. The Chancellor for Fayetteville State University. So thank you everyone. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read my speech. Um, just for fun fact, this is my sixth term being elected to the city council and I am thrilled and um, honored to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and fellow residents of Fayetteville, it is with great honor and humility that I stand before you today and take the oath of office for the sixth term as the representative of District 1. I am deeply grateful for the trust and confidence you have placed in me and I'm committed to serving each one of you to the best of my ability. I would like to thank my husband, Big Jerry, of 30 years this year, and all my boys, my family, and my friends 
I am so blessed to have so many people in my corner and I do have my family here and thank you for coming and supporting me always. As a proud resident of the city of Fayetteville with rich history and promising future, I am keenly aware and immense potential and unique challenges we face. I am committed to work tirelessly to address the needs and concerns of our district and our city. As I take the oath of office, I'm reminded of the tremendous responsibility that comes with re representing the people of District 1. I pledge to continue working tirelessly to address the needs and concerns in the community to advocate for policies and promote economic growth, quality of life, and public safety. I'm especially proud to be to represent a community that is home of the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council that was revised in 2014. And if you did not notice the young people that brought you to your seats, that is our Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council that has served on national boards, state boards, and has become the number one youth council seven times, six times in a row. And if they are here, if they could stand up, are they in the audience? There they are. Here, look over here, here we go. And of course, the Fateville Next crew. Do I have anybody from Fateville Next? This is our 20 and over group. An inspiring group of young leaders who are the future of our city. I am dedicated to advocating for policies and initiatives that empower our youth and provide them with the resources that they need to thrive and succeed. Fayetteville has been recognized as the all-American city and the can-do city, and I am committed to upholding and building upon this legacy. With the large, we are the largest neighbor to the largest military installation in the world and I am deeply honored to serve on the North Carolina Military Affairs Commission as a commissioner, working to support the brave men and women who serve our community. In addition to my role as a city council member, I am privileged to serve on the board member of the North Carolina League of Municipalities as well as FAMPO and the Mid-Carolina Council. Through these positions, that our voices of our community are heard at a state and regional levels and that our needs are met with understanding and support. I am eagerly ready to work collaboratively with my fellow council members, community members, and most importantly, with you, the residents of our great city. Together, we can build a brighter, more prosperous future for Fayetteville. I am deeply grateful for the trust you have placed in me, and I promise to work tirelessly on your behalf. As I close out tonight, I leave you with a poem that was read to me in a meeting yesterday at the Mid-Carolina Council, and it spoke to me. We are not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm. Some have yachts, some have canoes, and some are drowning. Just be kind and help whoever and whenever you can. Thank you very much, and I look forward to working for our great city. Congratulations, Councilwoman Jensen. I now invite Malik W. Davis, District 2, to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Tony King.
Davis, if I could just take a point of privilege. Yes. You are no stranger to service. You serve the community through the district court judge's office as a staff member, and you serve citizens in the most difficult position with compassion and professionalism. And although we miss you dearly, we know that you'll continue the great works of District 2 and the great works for the city of Fayetteville. Thank you. It is my honor and privilege to administer your oath. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. You'll place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Malik Davis. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. And maintain. And maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of North Carolina. Of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of my office. Of my office. As council member. As council member. For the city of Fayetteville. For the city of Fayetteville. North Carolina. North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Thank you Councilman. So much. Good evening, everyone. How are y'all? Good, good. So thank you to uh, the Chancellor and the Feather State University. Um, first off, I would like to thank God, um, who is the head of my life. I'd like to thank my mother for um, raising her baby son. Um, I'd also like to thank my family members for your unwavering support from day one. I'd also like to give a special thank you to the district court judge's office and staff members for your unwavering support in my next adventure. And I also want to give a special thank you to my pastors, E.B. and Rosa Herman, who are here, and my church family for all of your support. And I also want to give a special thank you to the citizens of District 2 um, for entrusting me to be your next representative. Um, I know you guys are wondering who these three gentlemen are here uh, standing beside me. Uh, so the, this little one here is my nephew, Hakeem Jr., um, who is... Uh, five years old. Uh, in the middle, we have Kamari Campbell, who is nine years old at Ferguson Easley Elementary School, who is in the fourth grade. And then who looks like he could be my brother, a uh, 17-year-old, uh, Dylan Kamardi, who is a junior in Terry Sanford High School. The reason I have them standing here is because if you follow my campaign, you heard me talk about making a positive impact and uh, uh, being a positive influence for the next generation. Um, so today, I've come to show you what that actually looks like. And so I'm, show, I'm here to show you what I did not have. Yeah. So they are here because I wanted to share this moment with them because I realized everything I do is bigger than me. Um, so the funny story about Kamari, Kamari and his grandmother um, came to the early voting site um, in the primary elections, and she, she was an educated voter. She knew who she was coming to vote for, but she still did her due diligence and spoke to every candidate that was out there. And so um, as they went inside, he runs out after they go vote and says, we voted for you, we voted for you. I was like, oh, wow, thank you so much. And um, he pulled me to the side and he said, don't be mad at me. I said, why would I be mad? He said, because when I turn 18, I'm gonna run for office just like you. <laughs> and so at that moment, at that moment is when I realized everything I was saying was coming to life unto me. And I want them to know publicly that you will live to see your success. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't do it, that you're too young, that you're too old. And I want you to know that anytime it tr trials and tribulations come, remember that you can do anything and everything. And don't ever let you, no one tell you that you three young black boys will not be successful because you will. So with that being said, uh, I want to give a special thank you once again to my constituents in District 2. Um, I know this will be a great opportunity for us to learn and grow together as I adventure into this next phase of my life. Um, I promise to give each and every consider, uh, 
issue that you guys have told me about and will continue to tell me about. I promise to give it the consideration that it deserves. Um, and I also want to continue hearing your ideas and getting your feedback and finding out more ways that I can better serve you. Because this is not about me, it's about serving the community. And as I continue to serve the community, I want to make sure that your voice is really at the table. And I also want you to know that I cannot do this alone because we don't grow in isolation, we grow in community. And I also want to let these young boys know this one thing before we uh, leave as I close, as I wrap this up, is that your feet can never take you where your mind has not gone. So as you continue to go, that simply means continue to think bigger. Don't ever let nobody tell you your dreams are too small or they're too big. You keep thinking and you keep dreaming. And as I bring this to a close, I want to let the citizens of Fayetteville, North Carolina know uh, that if you're wondering what District 2 is going to look like or what the city is going to look like with me as a representative in this community, it's going to look like me and you working together and bringing impact into this, into this community and for this next generation to make sure that we are living in a place that is inviting to play, stay, and fay. And I also, as I, <laughs> that's Kathy's plug. Um, um, as I bring this to a close, District 2, with my whole heart, I'm asking you, if you just give me 1% of your trust, I promise you, I will earn the 99% and bring results to District 2. Because your fresh voice has officially made it to the table. Thank you. Give these gentlemen a hand as they take their seat. Congratulations, Councilman Davis. I now invite Mario Benevente, District 3, to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Anita Earls. Councilman Benevente, please allow me just a moment to thank you for your courageous leadership, for your committed service, and thank you for the honor of allowing me to administer this oath of office. Just for us. If you would place your left hand and raise your right hand and state after me. Of course. I, Mario Benevente. I, Mario Benevente. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And, and the laws Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. The duties of my office as council member. As council member for the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. For the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. I think someone left their phone up here. Are those yours? Oh, the speakers. All right. Just want to make sure I wasn't going to be reading off of someone's text messages. Good evening, Fadeville. I want to begin by thanking my dazzling fiance, Caroline Gregory, for always being by my side and for the renewed purpose you've given me as we build a life and a family together. Uh, thank you to the Honorable Justice Anita Earls for being with us this evening. And we're all grateful to you and your work as an absolute paragon of civil rights in our state's Supreme Court. I must also thank our campaign team. Uh, my campaign manager, Bishop McNeil, Maria Cantu, Gregory Williams, Danny D'Antonio, Deanna Royal, Trent Holmes, Frank Thompson, and Gregory, uh, and the Lynch family, Kim, Santana, and of course, happy birthday, Larice. 
I'm also grateful for the support from the North Carolina Asian Americans Together, AFL-CIO, and members of the Cape Fear Indivisible family. Ultimately, none of this would be possible without the voters of District 3, who are sending me back to City Hall. I used to joke about my landslide victory last year, where I was elected by six votes. This time, we genuinely welcomed overwhelming support of over 75% and the distinction of being the highest raw vote getter of all the incumbent city council members being sworn in today. Our team accomplished this by never compromising our core values or our stated mission. That above all else, we would demonstrate servant leadership and set a new standard for how responsive a city councilman ought to be to their neighbors. Preaching transparency is an old standard. And I draw a distinction between transparent and being apparent. I'm transparent when I tell you the answer you're seeking is somewhere on a website. I practice being apparent when I meet my neighbors more than halfway and ensure they're getting the information that I know that they're interested in without having to be asked the right question. We never missed a community watch and we started new ones and we reignited expectations at our long-standing ones. We have a new traffic light on MacArthur for Tiffany Pines. We have new speed bumps going in on Landau and Hillendale. We put an end to illegal parking on Brunswick and Cottonade. We sent stormwater engineers to work with our residents in Eccles Park. And Seabrook Braddell is on the cusp of historic investment from the Merchant Choice Neighborhood Project set to bring tens of millions of dollars in development to the corridor. It's a big deal. It's a lot of money. In all of those examples, the community watch captains of those respective communities were the steam that powered those projects. So thank you for letting me work with you and for you. Now, while being a member of city council is absolutely a responsibility to the demands of my district, I'm also charged with directing, along with my colleagues, a $300 million budget to serve the entire Fayetteville community. And in many ways, our professional staff uh, makes magic happen with that amount. Still, we have significant challenges that I must speak to candidly this evening. Because if this is the last speech I get to make as an elected official, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself for not stating it plainly. The city of Fayetteville needs a total cultural shift in the way we operate city services in Fayetteville. The $300 million that we're working on is not effectively serving those who are struggling, those seniors who are struggling to maintain their homes and the predatory callers who are attempting to bamboozle them into selling their property. The $300 million is not serving the children and the grandchildren of our seniors who cannot afford to stick around and live here in Fayetteville in order to build on the legacy of their families. Um, that the families fought for because we can't commit to the strategies that bring economically diverse career opportunities so our graduates and young professionals, we see them leaving to bigger cities. The $300 million is not effectively serving our most vulnerable neighborhoods and community members trapped in cycles of poverty and violence because the city is only getting involved after the emergency or after the harm has occurred. And our, re and our response only really comes with legal consequences that perpetuate that collapse. So as we're living with these consequences of decades of outdated strategies, and lack of strategic investment that costs us even more than simply just stopping to consider, is there a better way? Uh, we can be more than just a retirement town. So let's do it, let's act like it, and let's make this the real big city that it ought to be. So every day for the next two years, uh, I'll be working diligently with my colleagues to make this shift a reality. A shift away from business as usual, and that's how we always do it, and that's just what we're set up for. And I want to make sure that in the next year, we fully fund an Office of Community Safety here in the city of Fayetteville. That deserves a round of applause. With a $3 million investment, peer cities have responded to 911 calls that deal with mental health, folks struggling with addiction, folks struggling with poverty. And they have professional, clinical outreach professionals going to these areas, responding to these needs without the unnecessary need for law enforcement and again, perpetuating the issues that these folks are facing. We could have that here in Fayetteville if we invest the $3 million, we could have it within 11 months and that's before the end of this two years terms. So that's gonna be my priority uh, moving forward. Also, as we stand here in Chancellor Allison's building, I wanna make Fayetteville State University a voting block. There's no reason why these young people these hundreds, these thousands of students aren't actively engaged in our elected uh, municipal elections. Uh, they could absolutely be dictating who is on city council and whether or not, while they're struggling to uh, manage affordable housing as they compete on the rental market, or as they decide whether or not that big job or that big career is gonna come to Fayetteville, they could be a part of the decision-making process as it relates to who is in office to bring that about. I wanna close by saying simply, 
in the words of Dr. King, that human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless extensions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals like everyone here. And that's what I hope to be a role model for, and I hope that you guys can join me as we continue to make this cultural shift happen here in Fayetteville. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilman Benvente. I now invite DJ Hare, District 4, to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Mike Morgan. Councilman Hare, thank you for once again affording me to have the privilege to administer your oath of office back here in the wonderful city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Sir, if you're ready to take your oath, please put your left hand on the Bible. And instead of putting your hand on the Bible, you will merely affirm, and that is fine. Please repeat the affirmation after me. I, DJ Hare. I, DJ Hare. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm that I will support that I will support and maintain and maintain the Constitution the Constitution and laws and laws of the United States of the United States and the Constitution and the Constitution and laws and laws of North Carolina of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith not inconsistent therewith and that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties of my office of my office as council member as council member for the city of Fayetteville the city of Fayetteville North Carolina North Carolina and this is my solemn and this is my solemn affirmation affirmation you may lower your hand councilman here once again mm -hmm. congratulations thank you thank you Well, join me and let me say praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. I made it. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Come on. <laughs> I wondered what I would say tonight. My spirit is high, my heart is tender. 12 years, 12 terms, 23 years, I have served this city. Thank you, Fedville. Before I forget, I had to make some notes. I want to thank my good friend and brother, of course, my Omega Sci Fi brother and candidate for North Carolina Governor Justice Mike Morgan for 
putting us in your schedule to come to Fayetteville once again and to support Baby Girl and I. We thank you. And election day is a lot of work. And we could not do that work without our beloved poll workers. Some of our poll workers stayed on the polls from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And baby girl and I are so honored. Thank you, those of you that are here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We could not have done this without you guys. Thank you. I also want to thank those of you that supported us financially. Because of you, you allowed us to put information about our campaign in every household in District 4. And you cannot do a campaign without financial support. Thank you for those of you that supported our campaign. I see one of them here tonight. Thank you to our prayer partners. Thank you to our family. Those of you that pray for us when we didn't even call you, but we were so honored, weren't we, baby, that you all did that for us. And we're so honored. As I close, I want to get, tell you a little short story as my heart and my voice begins to crack. I want to tell you a story, it's very short, where I had major surgery in October. And within that surgery, before I had that surgery, I used to ponder about going to community meetings and going to places publicly because I did not want anyone to see their councilman a little weak or walking with a cane. But then the Lord released me and told me not to be ashamed. And as I started going through District 4, as Baby Girl and I started going through District 4, from Murkison Road to Riley Road, I had this beautiful sister and many others throughout District 4 come up to me and say, Councilman Hare, we are a team. You take care of our neighborhoods and our concerns. You get things done. And on every election year, because of what you do for us, you don't have to worry. We are going to take care of you. Citizens of Fayetteville, thank you. District 4, thank you. And a hand clap goes right there. As I go to my seat, I will just share, you, share with you a moment of love. I said that to say that to my council members sitting behind me and those of you that are getting ready to come after me. This is a camaraderie ship. This is a team. This is us for them. This is not a big you, a little me. I wouldn't vote for you because of this or that. This is about team building and moving forward the citizens of Fedville. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's about you guys, amen? Thank you. As I go to my seat, you notice this beautiful lady sitting beside, standing beside me. <clears throat> Men, I know you're going to say what you're going to say in your heart when I say what I'm going to say. I have the best wife God has ever created. She's there for me. She takes care of me. When I cannot go to a meeting, just about everyone in District 4 and all of our District 4 meetings she would be there. 
not speaking for me, but taking notes and writing down things and bringing those things back to me so that I can stay on the job for you. So as I get ready to go to my seat and she gets ready to go to her seat, Once again, my love. Once again, my love, you know how I feel. You know that you take care of me, and I love you. And you all out there, we got some more terms in, in us. We got some more time in us. Just want you to know. Thank you, Fayetteville. Thank you, baby. I'll take this. I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Someone come help her. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilman Hare. I now invite Lynn B. Green, District 5, to receive the oath of office administered by Representative Diane Wheatley. tell you how proud I am of you. Um, you would had a great, great campaign. Your mother was so wonderful. We know that you're no stranger to service to this community, and we know that you'll work with all of the folks in the City Council to make this a better place to live, and I'm very honored to administer you oath. You ready? I, Lynn Green. I, Lynn Green. Do solemnly, solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support and maintain the Constitution. And maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. And laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And inconsistent therewith. And inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office as a council member. As a council member for the city of Fayetteville. For the city of Fayetteville. North Carolina. North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, I don't think I'm that tall, but we'll work with it. Good evening, everyone. I stand here tonight both honored and humbled, knowing that I have been entrusted with such a huge responsibility of representing District 5 in the legislative functions of our city. In preparing for tonight, 
I reflected on those days from July 7th to November 7th, probably the longest four months of my life. I am so thankful for every single person that played a role in my journey. I remember praying over it as to whether I was had the time to stand up and try to be part of the solution. You see which answer I received. With the passing of Sandra Day O'Connor, I have often thought of her quote, this chance will stand before you but once. I now understand more than ever exactly what she meant. I had a great team of folks who worked tirelessly to get me to this spot tonight. I was surrounded by people with strong personalities, strong ideals, and strong character, much like I have been my entire life. Being a daddy's girl and working directly with him for over 30 years, I always knew how strong and determined my father was. My mother was always the center of faith in our home and the caregiver in our home. I never realized how incredibly strong and tenacious my mother was until my father's death in 2021. Thanks, Mom, for standing with me tonight and raising me to be the person I am today. I know that Dad would be super proud as well. I also want to thank Representative Diane Waitley for being here to swear me in tonight and for also being one of those people with a strong voice and strong character helping me on my campaign. She has been a dear friend to this community and our city and myself for a long time. This election experience gave me the self-actualization to face the unforeseen challenges that seemed to come at me daily. More than once, I had to identify I intently focus on the task immediately before me and block out all the distractions. I had to focus on what would get me to the desired result, the common goal we were all working towards, to get me elected so I could work for change in our city. I wish I could tell you how flawless it was, but, it, but as with most things in life, there were obstacles and differences of opinion on how those obstacles should be addressed. We always discussed our different views and came to common ground for the ultimate goal, much like I believe this council will also do. On this council, we have strong personalities, but we are all here for a common purpose, to serve the citizens. We were elected to be the voices of our districts, but in that singleness of the council, we are also called to be the collective voice for the city we all love. I pray that throughout the next two years, we are able to each individually represent our districts while not losing sight of our bigger goal, which is to continue to grow and foster a city that we are all proud to call home. A fable that people are asking to move to, a fable that no one wants to live, to leave, a fable where our citizens thrive and their daily struggles are minimized. A fable with a clear and concise vision for the future. I believe we are standing at a crossroads tonight. We have an opportunity before us to be the change that voters have clearly told us they desire. We should champion those things that other councils have done well in the past, while also recognizing those things that we can do better. I cannot promise to always answer, to know the answer, but I can promise to always look for the answer. I promise to study and be prepared. I promise to use my experience and my research to make the best possible decisions for our city. I promise to always work hard for my district and our city. As Thomas Edison said, the three great essentials to achieve anything worthwhile are hard work, stick to itiveness and common sense. I leave you this tonight. Has anyone in the audience or watching been considering whether it's time for you to stand up and be part of the solution? If so, I ask you to prayerfully consider it too as I did. Our city has many boards and commissions that need our citizens' expertise. If you hear the call to help move our city forward, I hope you will reach out to me 
or any one of our district's representatives. I thank you all for being here tonight, and I look forward to serving the citizens of District 5 and our wonderful city. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilwoman Green. I now invite Derek Thompson, District 6, to receive the oath of office administered by Mr. White Walter Peichel. Sir. Ready, sir. Derek Thompson, congratulations on your election to a second term. Thank you, sir. I want to congratulate you again for all your efforts you have made over the last year and a half, and actually over all the years that I've known you, to make Fayetteville District 6 and Cumberland County a better place to live. Thank you. It's my honor and my pleasure to administer the oath of office to you. Thank you, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I. I, Derek Thompson, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and maintain the Constitution, that I will support and maintain the Constitution, of the laws and the laws of the United States, and the laws of the United States, and the Constitution, and the Constitution, and laws of North Carolina, and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. The duties of my office as council member. As council member for the city of Fayetteville. For the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me again as your council member for District 6. First, let me thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for without him, all things is possible with him. I thank all of you, I thank all of my constituents in District 6 for allowing me to serve a second term. First and foremost, I am grateful. I am humble. I am appreciative and I will do all I can to make sure I serve each and every one of you for the next two years. Uh, I wouldn't be here without my lovely wife of 38 years. I love her to death. She's my pride, she's my joy. Uh, I tell people all the time that service is a sacrifice. And it's just not a sacrifice for me, it's a sacrifice for my family also. 
If some of you remember, my wife, my mother was here last year and she passed away. So I had a rough year trying to deal with my family and deal with council too. But I thank my fellow council members for praying and supporting me each way of my journey of recovery. Uh, let me thank Walt, a good friend of mine who we served together on the board together for 12 years to, uh, to give me my oath. And let me thank my pastor Joe, who also served with me on my board to pray for me. I like to start everything I do in prayer, because without God, we're nothing. So I thank you guys for, for bearing with me. Uh, there's a lot of people's shoulders who I stood on when I first came up here last year. But this year, I want to thank a specific group, and that's my Rekonda fellow citizens. I don't call them just citizens. I call them friends. I call them comrades. I call them family. Because without them, trust me, I would not be here today for them pushing me to serve at a higher level, to serve not just the Rayconda development, but the entire city of Fayetteville and District 6. So Rayconda, if you're in the building, wave your hands, let everybody know, I see y'all back there. Wave your hands and let them know that, look, it's because of y'all's while I'm here today. So tonight I stand before you with a vision of our beloved city, a vision built upon the pillars of help, hope, and healing. Just as a community thrives when its members support one another, so too we must extend a helping hand to address the immediate needs of our beloved city. Pulling together our resources and talents, we can provide assistance where it is needed most. Supporting local businesses, aiding struggling families and communities, and ensuring access to essential services. Together, we can be the helping force that elevates Fayetteville to a higher level. As we embark on this journey together, hope must be the guiding force that propels us forward. In the spirit of unity, we must come together to create and implement strategic plans that pave the way for a brighter future. Let us envision a Fayetteville where opportunities abound, where our children dream without limitations, and where every resident feels a sense of optimism about what tomorrow holds. Through strategic planning, we can turn hope into a tangible reality for our community and for our city. But to achieve these aspirations, we need a framework of structure, strategy, and simplicity. Just as a strong and resilient community requires a strong structure, we must work together to build a foundation that supports the growth and well-being of our city. This involves thoughtful planning, investment in infrastructure, jobs, housing, and a commitment to policies, ordinances, and code enforcement that benefits all citizens. Within the structure, a well-defined strategy is essential. I will work to formulate clear and achievable goals that consider the diverse perspectives within our community. By simplicity, our approach is equally crucial. In this complexity of governance, simplicity can be a guiding principle. A straightforward and transparent approach fosters trust, confidence, support, and ensuring that every resident can easily understand and engage with the decisions that impact their lives. Together we must move forward with unity, tranquility, and civility. Supporting one another as we collectively build a Fedville that not only strives, but thrives. Together, we must be the architects of a community that helps offer hope and facilitates healing. Together, we can be a community that stands as a beacon for others to emulate. Together, we can do all things through Christ. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilman Thompson. I now invite Brenda McNair, District 7, to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Gail Adams.
First of all, Brenda, I would like to say thank you so much for your willingness to serve. I know you're going to do a fantastic job for the citizens of this great city. I also want to say thank you for this honor and privilege of administering your oath. Please repeat after me. I, Brenda McNair. I, Brenda McNair. Do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support and maintain and maintain the Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States of the United States and the Constitution and laws and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith not inconsistent therewith and that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties of my office of my office as council member as council member for the city of Fayetteville, for the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Ooh, how y'all doing? Hey. I know y'all tired. We're winding down now. <laughs> down to the last of Mohegans. And I want to thank my little helpers here. This is my great granddaughter, Nyla, and uh, my grandson, uh, DJ. They want to stand with me today. <laughs> um, also, I want to thank all my um, friends and my family. You guys know. When I rode, I rode deep because I cherish my family, I cherish my friends, I cherish my community. And so whenever I ask them to stand by me, they're always willing to do so um, because we, we love one another and we share love on a consistent basis. Uh, also, I want to thank God for being here today, because without him, I don't know where I would be. And without him, this little shy girl wouldn't be standing here. Without him, I'm going to say without him, without him. I want to give honor to my mom and my dad who has gone on to see the Lord and my grandmother, my grandfather, and my two brothers, my younger brother and my older brother, which I lost within the last year. Um, and also I have a grandson that has uh, gone on to be with the Lord as well. One year ago, you show your confidence in me to serve as councilwoman of District 7 in the city of Fayetteville within my first year. My number one objective was to connect with you, to hear from you, and to work alongside you. I did my best to make my presence known and to communicate to you the value of your voice as I did my best to represent District 7. 
as we enter into another election term. I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the ways in which you supported me in this first year. Thank you for showing up at the many community forums we hosted. Thank you to our ministry and business leaders for being present and engaged. Thank you for your prayers, your calls, your text messages, offering feedback and encouragement. Thank you for being a part of the movement to clean up the district by partnering with me on a project that encouraged a better quality of life for our citizens. Thank you for attending our community picnic in the park, which we hosted at Lake Ram, Ram Park, which was very, very successful. And thank you for sharing your views and concerns when called upon to discuss the crime in the direction of our youth. In my first year, the goal was to make my presence known. In doing so, my objective was also to, number one, do my best to keep you informed of what you needed to know, and number two, empower you, not only as a citizen of our community, but as a partner with me in representing our district and our city. Within the next two years, the mission continues. We will continue with our campaign to inform and empower the citizen of Fayetteville representing District 7. We have so much more to accomplish in this next two years, such as crime prevention, communicate and problem solve with my colleagues. In doing so, I have no doubt that we will continue to stand united in supporting the growth and enhancement of our can-do city. I am Brenda McNair, your councilwoman for District 7, and I thank you for your vote. Congratulations, Councilman McNair. I now invite Courtney Banks McLaughlin, District 8, to receive the oath of office administered by Senator Val Applewhite. Thanks, McLaughlin. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this special evening. It has been a pleasure watching you grow into this role and your leadership in our community. And one thing I always know when we, I see you in the community, you have your crew with you. And I know that family means everything to you. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Repeat after me. I, Courtney Banks McLaughlin. I, Courtney Banks McLaughlin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution of laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitutional laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith not inconsistent therewith, 
and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office of my office as council member as council member of the city of Fayetteville of the city of Fayetteville North Carolina North Carolina so help me God so help me God congratulations <laughs> thank you I love you Good evening. Thank you all for being here with us this evening. State Senator Applewhite, thank you for administering my oath. Your leadership has opened the doors for black female politics like me. The very first time I stood on this stage was in 2019 to be sworn in to Fayetteville City Council, member for District 8. It was a historical moment that election year. I sat alongside with Yvonne Kingston, Chris Davis, Shaquilla Ingram. We all were newly elected. The first time in history having the most number ever of African Americans to include most women to serve on Fayetteville City Council. That's when Fayetteville truly became the can-do city. Here I am again, one on my third term. God has anointed me the desire to be a public servant, and I will continue to do so and be obedient just as he blessed me. God has guided me with the tools of success, and I will continue to apply those gifts, ensuring that I lead with love, honesty, optimism, empathy, consciousness, integrity, and compassion. Lord, I thank you and I am grateful despite the tragedy of losing my daughter. You allowed me to continue to push through and lead with perseverance. To my husband and my children, thank you. Thank you for always being so supportive and encouraging me to pursue my aspirations. You've learned to adjust and you understand the significance and dedication and sacrifice. And also you allowed and watched me um, contribute to this community through my leadership. To my family, friends, pastor, my Lewis Chapel family, thank you for traveling near and far. Thank you for supporting me for this occasion. It truly means a lot. Thank you for your continuance of prayers and your genuine love and guidance. To my illustrious Delta Sigma Theta sorority, thank you for <laughs> always showing up. Your loyalty and sisterhood is always heartfelt. To our newly elected and my colleagues, I want to take the time to um, welcome Councilmember Davis as well as Councilmember Green on your election. I look forward to working with you alongside with the rest of my colleagues. I leave these three words, collaborate, communicate, and negotiate. <laughs> to City Manager Hewitt and our staff, thank you for championing our ideas and visions for this city which led us to be recognized as the All-American City. To our city employees who've provided exceptional city service to our community, the city runs off of your commitment and dedication. You are the backbones in operating our city, so I thank you for your service and it does not go unnoticed. 
Last but not least, I'm grateful for the residents of District 8 who entrust me to act as their representative in making impactful decisions. You've entrusted me to be the representative for District 8, not once, not twice, but three times with no opposition. I'm truly humbled for your continuous support, your engagement, and account accountability stance. Again, thank you for allowing me to serve this district and residents of the great city. I, wanna, I want each of you to know that my resolution to run for North Carolina House 42 is it's a genuine opportunity. I love this city just as you do, so I'm not leaving the 8th district. I'm just going up the road, returning with investments, resources for our can-do city, county and state. Many obstacles have arisen in our life. However, I'm still here, I'm still serving, and I'm still advocating. I do not foresee any more, any more, any other individual more capable of being committed to serving District 42 than myself. My hopes are that you continue to put your confidence in my vision and allow me to aid as your representative, not just for Fayetteville, but Spring Lake and Fort Liberty. I have no plans on leaving until the work is done. Again, I'm just going up the street to be able to provide additional policies that's beneficial for our community and for our can-do city as well as county and state. I am a proponent of women's rights, equal rights, civil rights, and voting rights. Thank you for your time. Congratulations, Ms. Banks McLaughlin. I now invite Dino Hondros, District, District 9, to receive the oath of office administered by the Honorable Cull Jordan. after me. I, Dino Hondros, I, Dino Hondros do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support and maintain, that I'll support and maintain the, Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States of the United States and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, of North Carolina not, inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, the duties of my office as council member Council member for the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. For the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Are we there yet? <laughs> Seasons greetings, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to thank God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him, all things are possible. <clears throat> I would like to thank my parents who could not be here today. They taught me how to be a good son. My father is my hero. He, along with his father before him, is the hardest working person I know. <clears throat> Last year during the campaign season, and you all know I have a lot of signs. <clears throat> so I needed to borrow a sledgehammer. So went to Dad's house, said, Dad, I need a sledgehammer. He said, go to the shed and get it. So this, this isn't a normal sledgehammer. So it's an eight-pound head, had the wooden handle. Now, Dad, in his prime, he could swing that bad boy. He would break the wooden handle so many times he got a friend of his to weld a lead pipe on it. So this, this hammer is about 15 pounds. 
when I was younger and I used to pick that hammer up, I used to feel like Thor. <clears throat> One of the saddest things my father ever said to me, a couple weeks after I borrowed it, I took it back. I said, Dad, I'm bringing, your, bringing the hammer back and putting it in the shed. He said, Son, you keep it. I can't swing it like I used to. Well, Dad, I can't swing it like you used to either. I'd like to thank my sisters, Olga and Stella, for making me a better brother. I want to thank my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, and my lovely wife, Liza, for making me a better husband. My mother-in-law always held me accountable, and Liza is doing the same thing. To my son, James, thank you for making me a better father. All of you have made me a better man. I'd also like to thank all of our friends and neighbors who voted and who have entrusted us with the decisions that will help shape and move Fable forward for the next two years. The voters, you all that are here tonight, I see some of our local press, you all hold us accountable. Last year after the elections and leading up to our inauguration, much like we're here tonight, we received a message from staff uh, with instructions to prepare three to five minutes worth of words of appreciation. Uh, as many of you may know, I cut my teeth in the restaurant business. I've done everything there is to do in a restaurant, from cleaning restrooms to washing dishes, from cooking on the line to serving. For those of you that have had the opportunity to wait tables, uh, just like hustling on the street or grinding in any front-facing uh, industry, retail, customer service, you learn people. <clears throat> so uh, to all of you that attended the ceremony last year, you know that I spoke for about 30 seconds. As I looked out into the audience after the mayor and all of my colleagues, because I'm always last in District 9, saving the best for last, uh, I read the room. And when I looked out into the room, I saw a lot of faces that really weren't interested in anything I had to say. And I see a lot of those faces right now. <laughs> so I chose grace, and I cut my comments short, and I yielded my time. So I apologize in advance. This year, I will not be as gracious. Madam Clerk and Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm going to need some of that time back from last year. <clears throat> to our previous council, thank you for the experience. From committee meetings to conferences to our visit uh, to Capitol Hill, the work we did, the memories we made, the experience we gained is invaluable and will serve us well over the next two years. To the mayor, thank you. We didn't always agree on everything. However, you always treated us, you never treated us any different whether we were on the same side or opposing side of, of an item or an issue. I always try to remember that and emulate that. You always answered my call or called back when I reached out. You see, the mayor is one of three members of the previous council that I knew prior to being elected. Through various boards and committees, Stormwater, UDO Task Force, and others, I had met and worked with the mayor and the former mayor pro tem a little bit. To former mayor pro tem Dawkins, thank you for your guidance. You and I worked stormwater together for many years. You were the chair of the mayor and the council's stormwater committee when I was the chair of the Citizens Stormwater Advisory Board, or SWAB as we affectionately like to call it. <clears throat> you would attend our SWAB meetings and you would graciously invite me to the council stormwater committee meetings. You often advise me on what to do and sometimes by example, what not to do. <clears throat> council member Jensen has known me the longest. She and I, uh, as some of our other colleagues on council are members of the same church. Um, you've literally known me since I was born. Our church family is like extended family, just like in the old country, in the Greek culture, if you're from the same village, you're basically extended family. <clears throat> you were always there when I reached out, and I thank you for taking me under your wing. To Council Member Hare, the Dean of Council, thank you. You lead by example in how you advocate for the residents of District 4, and they love you for it. We haven't always agreed on everything, but I want to thank you, and I look forward to serving with you for the next two years. Uh, to our previous sophomores, Councilwoman Ingram and Banks McAuliffe, thank you for setting an example for our, our freshman class. Shaquilla, you have the biggest heart, bigger than 
all of our hearts combined. <clears throat> Courtney, you always accepted me as I am. You always listened to my position, and you never judged me for it. To my freshman class, congratulations. We have graduated. We're sophomores. <laughs> uh, we were elected together, we were re-elected together, and we'll forever be linked together. We didn't always agree, but we always put in the work. Brother Derek, we did everything together, from orientation to committees. For the first six months, anytime you saw one of us at City Hall, the other one was in the shadow. Um, it was rare to see one of us there without the other. Brenda, I almost didn't recognize you tonight. Give it up for Brenda's new hairdo. <laughs> you and I regretfully didn't collaborate and communicate as much as I would have liked. Um, and for those of you that, that know me, usually when you greet someone, they ask you how you're doing, my, my default response is, I'm blessed more than I deserve. And, and that's a personal reminder for me so that I never forget. So, um, Brenda, God's blessed me with another opportunity that I don't deserve. He blessed us with two more years for us to build that collaboration cooperation. Uh, and Mario, so the mayor, just like today, I'm stuck in Siberia. I'm always on the end. So on the dais, if you sit on council chambers, I'm all the way in Siberia. So I got the big guy, well, the mayor's the big guy, but the other big guy, uh, our city manager, uh, Doug Hewitt, I got him on my left and I got Mario on my right. So it's like on one shoulder I got my conscience and the other shoulder is a, is a sometimes frustrated, always passionate, saying, just flip the tables. <laughs> And to the newly minted freshman class, welcome. I've spoken to you both several times over the last several weeks, and you're both ready, willing, and able to serve. And I look forward to serving with you over the next two years. As always, feel re free to reach out whenever the need arises. In closing, to my colleagues, we must be bold. Leadership is sculpting a harmonious team from diverse minds, not molding everyone into a single shape. We must be willing to let go of what worked yesterday and learn new ways of seeing, doing, and leading. One of the most dangerous positions we can take is we've always done it this way. We must build more bridges and less walls. To all the great residents here and at home, we need you. We need more individuals who embrace their duty to act rather than their mere ability to act. True progress requires all of us. It's a partnership. True progress requires a profound sense of responsibility. We must be strategic. We must consider the effects and the impacts of our decisions, not just for this generation, but for the next generations to come. And we must build trust. Trust is the bedrock of leadership. When people trust you, they feel that their interests are safe with you and they have confidence in your vision, your judgment, your ability, and your grit to see things through. We must restore the people's trust. And as Aristotle once said, excellence is never an accident. It's the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. Let's be excellent. Congratulations, Councilman Hondros. Let's give all of our newly elected officials and continuing officials a congratulatory round of applause. Well, let's give it up again for Ricardo Morgan for the new elected city council. And thank you again to all of you who have shared in this very special night uh, with us. Thank you to all the judges, justices, uh, elected officials, notaries, all of those who came to participate tonight. We say thank you. Uh, at this time, council, welcome. Uh, we will call our meeting to order. At this time, uh, we, have, we have had the Pledge of Allegiance, so if we can have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. All right, there's a motion, motion by Council Member Harris, seconded by uh, Council Member Green. Any discussion on the motion to approve the agenda? All right, Council, I'll look to you for your vote. Show of hands, those in favor. All right, motion carries, Madam Clerk. 
Item 4.01 is the election of the mayor pro tem. Uh, council member. So I'd like to have, make a motion on the floor, please. All right, council member here. I nominate. I'm gonna try to say the proper name, Catherine Keith Jensen for mayor pro tem. All right, there's a motion on the floor by council member here to nominate I never called her Catherine. So. I never did. I saw it on. I saw uh, it on. Me. All right. So, uh, Councilmember Jensen, is there a second to the motion of Councilmember here? Second by Councilmember Andros. Any discussion on the motion? All right, Council. I'll look to you for those in favor of the motion to elect Councilmember uh, Kathy Jensen as Mayor Pro Tem. Show of hands. Those in favor. All right, Madam Clerk. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Those opposed. I was voting in opposition, Council Member Banks McLaughlin. All right, motion carries. Congratulations, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> and item 4.02, you all have been so gracious as to bear with us this special moment, to share this special moment. So item 4.2 is the mayoral address, which I've already addressed it. It's, Plenty has been said, but we look forward certainly to working with this great well, council. Uh, it's a, uh, a great group of people who are willing to serve, uh, but this is a partnership that some of my colleagues have stated tonight, that this is nothing that the city council in and of ourselves can do alone. We need you, the citizens, uh, to make our city and our community a better place. So we look forward to working for you and look forward to working with you. Uh, with that council, do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion. Adjourn, sir. All right, motion to adjourn. Thank you, God bless. We now invite Pastor Herman to come forward and offer our benediction. All right, I see everybody's ready to go. Uh, Father, we thank you. So many have acknowledged your presence here tonight as they have accepted their new offices. We ask you now that you would extend your grace your mercy to each and every one of us as we leave this place but never leave in your presence. May the angels go ahead of us and with us preparing a path of safety. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. God bless you. The meeting is now adjourned. Please join us for light refreshments in the lobby. Congratulations all. <laughs>